guys, I'm Echo Sowers, and this is another tutorial for ADSR and SilentTutorials.com. That was a quick demo of the sound we'll be making today inside of Silent. It's kind of like a really thick, modern, super solid type sound with uh, some kind of elements, one, with uh, one element of a different waveform in there for a little bit of character. So what I'm going to do first is just quickly talk about what I have on that plugin, that channel strip that's third party. I carved out some bottom EQ just to fit with that kick a little bit better, nothing too crazy there. And I have an instance of the LFO tool doing some sidechain compression. So there it was with it on and off so you can hear the difference. And then this is just a kick sample. So I have a new instance pulled up. And I'm gonna turn the LFO tool on for this just because it'll help the sound kind of come together more closely to what you're hearing in the actual demo. So if you don't have the LFO tool, do whatever you do for sidechain compression because it'll kind of affect how you set your attack and decay settings inside of Silent. All right, so this is going to be a very polyphonic sound because I'm gonna be playing chords with it. So I just cranked it up to 16 and called it a day. I'm gonna be using all four oscillators, so part A and part B for this. So I'm gonna run quickly through this, otherwise the tutorial will get kinda of long. In oscillator A1, you're going to keep it on this uh, saw wave and you're gonna crank the voices up to six. So right now I'm just gonna go through and set up all the waveforms and voices for each of the oscillators. Now on oscillator A2, you're gonna do the same thing, another saw, because we wanna get that big saw sound. So slide that up one, and I'm gonna do seven voices. Now here's the sound. I'm going to turn it down a little for now. All right, so now let's go to part B and get the just at least the oscillator waveform styled in. So crank the voices up to eight, and you're going to crank that all the way to the end for noise. And what you're going to do is you're going to turn the volume down a good amount on this, and I'm going to do that now just because it's annoying to listen to. So I'm going to turn it down to about 1.24. and then uncheck retrig for that. And now let's go to the waveform that we're gonna use for oscillator B2. And we're gonna select the triangle saw waveform. So it's kind of this funky looking shape right there. And while we're here, we'll, we'll invert it and we're gonna do five voices for this. And we'll unretrig. So now here's a sound that we have. So it already sounds pretty cool just with the voices or the oscillator setup and no filter, but let's take it to a more polished level. So what we're going to do in oscillator A1 now is let's go back to part A and in this I'm going to down tune the octave to a negative one value. I'm going to turn the volume down a little bit to about 8.67 or around there. The reason why I did that down negative one is I'm going to do oscillator A2 down negative one as well to kind of get that bass and really thickness, which is also why I had to carve out some of the low frequency EQ because if this was in a song, it would clash with everything. So now let's add some phase to these. So I'm going to add about 40 degrees of phase to oscillator A1, and I'm also going to bump the phase just a hair on oscillator A2 to about 15, 10 to 15 degrees, anywhere in there will do. And now to get that really big sound, we're gonna obviously add some detune to this. So the detune value by default is at, will be at this uh, zero. I'm gonna turn that up to about 5.29 or around there. And then leave the pan where it is. So now with oscillator A2, the volume you can leave where it is up at 10. But now it's going to add some detune to this, but not as much as we did with oscillator A1, because otherwise it'd be too much. So I'm going to add about 2.25 anywhere in there. Actually, I'm going to do a little bit less. So the sound's going to be a pinch different from the beginning, but that's just because I don't, I kind of like using it with less, actually. It's about 1.29, and then keep the stereo in the pan where they are. Now we're going to uncheck retrig for all of these now that we have them redialed in because we don't want as more as of a digital sterile sound because we're going for that big super saw helps to have some differences between when the when the voices are triggering and when they're not so let's um now that we got that out of the way i'm going to head on over to part b and in part b for the for the volume we already kind of did that for our noise generator make sure you keep uh retrigger unselected and keep you don't have to touch phase detune stare or anything like that 
In oscillator B2, though, we're going to have to do some things. Let's turn the volume down, and let's turn this down to about 7. It's just three, 3 points. And now I'm going to turn... Let me turn that up a little. Now the phase for this, the phase is going to be cranked all the way to 360 degrees, so basically up 100%. And the detune, I'm going to add 2 and a half. I guess I'm going to go up to about 2.5 for the detune. So that's what part B sounds like. This already sounds pretty cool. Let's get the mix A and B squared away because I want the mix A to be lower. I want it to be about 3.74 because I'm using that as the bed to kind of lay that thickness in the, the lower tones. So the mix B, let's crank this up to about 5.92. Five point nine eight, anywhere in there, and now to finish off this top section of the synth, I'm going to crank the decay up, and keep the sustain where it is, and let's just give it a little bit of release to about a three point three. So this will change the sound a little bit. The reason why I'm cranking up that decay and now it kind of sounds really digital is because once we get to our modulation envelopes, I'm going to kill a little bit of that decay using the cutoff destination. So let's go to our filter. And in filter A, I'm going to select a low pass filter type. I'm going to keep the input as filter A. Keep the cutoff at halfway. Keep the resonance where it is. And then the drive, I'm just going to boost to a hair under one. I'm going to do the same thing for filter B. So what I'm going to use here is I'm going to hit copy. And now I'm going to go to part B. And I'm going to hit paste. And it will automatically stay. The input will be selected as B. But I did that just because it's easier to cut. I don't have to reselect cutoff. I can just, I mean, I don't have to select the filter type. I can just boost the cutoff knob. And I'm not even going to boost the, the, the drive knob. I'm going to keep it where it is. So that squares away the filters. So here's the sound now. All right. And actually, I want to double back to this real quick. I might have... Uh, led you astray. Go back to part B, click part P, part B, turn your release all the way down for that. Keep the decay and the sustain all the way up. But now go to part A and let's make sure that you have your decay up all the way for this. And then turn your release up to about two. I'll take it up to three. So your part A amp envelope should be the decay and the sustain jacked up all the way to 10 and about three, up to three on the on the release. And part B, your decay and sustain should be jacked up to 10 as well, but just no release time. All right, that squares all that away. Now let's go to this master filter control here. And I'm going to turn up the filter for this. I'm actually going to turn it up all the way when the rare times I'll do that in sign And for the resonance and the key track, we're not going to do anything for the resonance, but we're just going to give it a little bit of key tracking, which means the filter is key tracking to your notes. All right, so it's already a really cool dry sound, but let's take it a step further. I'm going to add a modulation envelope to this. I'm going to select cut off A, B, and in that, I'm just going to turn this little rotary knob up to 5.81, so not a lot. And now to get that to affect the sound, to affect the sound, I'm going to pump bump my decay up to 3.22. The sustain up to 1.26. And then give it a little bit more release. And now I'm going to select pitch A and B for the second modulation envelope. And I'm going to turn this uh, rotary knob up to about three and a half or around there. I'm just using this to bump the decay to give it a little bit of snap to the attack. All right, now that's done. So the sound's pretty much squared away except for the effects. So let's click on your distortion module. And in that, you're going to select the fold back drive type. So my favorite types in silent. For the amount, you're going to turn it to 1.48, and then you're going to keep the dry wet up at 100%.
So our distortion is actually kind of turning down the sound, which is interesting, I guess, for a distortion effect. So now I'm going to use the chorus to kind of widen things. So for the delay left time, choose 18 point, let's see what we got here. Choose about 18.83, I believe. The rate should stay at 0.61, and then the depth, you're going to make sure that's around 40%, which it should be by default. And the feedback, you'll keep at zero. The width, you'll keep at 100. And the dry wet, we're going to turn this down to 13%, or around there. Now I'm going to activate the EQ, and I'm going to keep it on one pull. Keep the bass and the bass frequency where they are. All we're really going to do is boost the treble to about 8 dB, 8.7 dB, so almost 9. And then the frequency, just turn up a little. And now I'm going to activate the delay. I'm going to choose a timing of, of a quarter note triplet and then an eighth note for delay left and right. And you can kind of do this to taste the low cut. I'm going to boost that a little, keep it on ping pong. Smear, I'm going to keep up. Spread, about a little bit under halfway. Feedback down a little so it's not as prominent. I'm going to turn the dry wet down as well. Finally, I'm going to slap on some reverb here just to soften things up. So for the size, I'm going to turn this down a little bit under halfway. Pre-delay, I don't want much pre-delay on it. Width, keep where it is. Damp, keep where it is. Dry, wet, do that to taste. And to clean up the sound a little bit, you can take off the distortion or just turn the dry wet down a little. But I kind of like that sound. So there you have it. You can turn the release down to get a little bit of that reverb out of the tail. That is the sound, guys. If you have any questions or comments, let me know below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And if you haven't checked out SilentTutorials.com, head on over there. Tons of cool things silent, like tutorials and presets. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.